Today is a big day as we implement the biggest tax cut. As we implement the biggest tax cut for a decade. Last week, a government minister was accused of sexually assaulting a young man. I want to quote the victim's account. He says, he grabbed my ass and then he slowly moved his hand down in front of my groin. I froze. I accept that's not easy listening, but it's a reminder to all those propping up this Prime Minister just how serious the situation is. He knew the accused minister had previously committed predatory behaviour, but he promoted him to a position of power anyway. Why? As soon as I was made aware of the allegation that he has just read out, uh, Mr Speaker, the complaint that was made, uh, he, lost, uh, his, um, he lost his status as a Conservative MP. And he is now the subject, uh, Mr Speaker, of uh, an independent investigation to the uh, Complaints and Grievances uh, panel. And that is entirely right. And I want to say to him, uh, Mr Speaker, I want to say to him that I abhor uh, bullying and abuse of power anywhere uh, in Parliament, uh, in this party or in any other party. None of that explains why he promoted him in the first place. And we've heard it all before. We know who he really is. Before he was found out, he's reported to have said he's handsy. That's the problem. Pincher by name, pincher by nature. Now, has the Prime Minister ever said words to that effect? And I'm not asking for bluster and half-truth. We've all had enough of that. Yes or no? Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm not going to trivialise uh, what happened. Uh, I, and I, I, and I, yes, Mr Speaker, yes, Mr Speaker, th- th- and I'm not, because the very serious complaints have been raised against uh, the member for Tamworth and they're now being uh, investigated, Mr Speaker. No denial. And he says the matter was resolved when he means it was upheld. Exactly. And, and they're all sitting there as if this is normal behaviour. Exactly. When that young man reported his attack, to a government whip, she asked him if he was gay. When he said that he was, she replied, that doesn't make it straightforward. And as for those who are left, only in office, because no one else is prepared to debase themselves any longer, the charge of the lightweight brigade. (laughs) Have some self-respect. Mr Speaker, it's easy to forget that only ten days ago the Prime Minister was dreaming of a third term. (laughs) Mr Speaker, you know, it's often said that a week is a long time in politics, but it turns out that ten days is truly a lifetime. Because, let's face it, it's a minor miracle that the Prime Minister has even made it through to Prime Minister's questions, and he really ought to see the faces behind him, because, Prime Minister, it really is over. Does the Prime Minister think there are any circumstances in which he should resign? Uh, I think, I, Mr Speaker, I clearly, if there, uh, if there were circumstances in which I felt it was uh, impossible for the government to go on and discharge uh, the mandate uh, that we've been given, uh, or if I felt, for instance, that we were being frustrated in our desire to support the Ukrainian people, uh, or, or, or over some major point, uh, then I would. But, but frankly, Mr. Speaker, the job of a Prime Minister in difficult circumstances, when he's been handed a colossal mandate, is to keep going, and that's what I'm going to do. Isn't it the example, Mr. Speaker? But it's the Prime Minister constantly tries to deflect from the issue, always tries to blame other people for mistakes and that at least nothing um, left for him to do other than to take responsibility and resign. Order. Order. Can, can I just say, you ought to be embarrassed by clapping. This is not a debate. Mr Esterson, it's not debating society. This is... This is Prime Minister's questions. I want to get through the questions as other people want to catch my eye. And the way to do it is not by clapping. Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, there's a very simple reason why they want me out. Uh, and, that is, and, that is, and that is because... Uh, and that is because they know, Mr Speaker, uh, that, if they, uh, that otherwise uh, we are going to get on and deliver our mandate and win another general election. And that is the reality, Mr Speaker. The Prime Minister once wrote 
It is a wonderful and necessary fact of political biology that we never know when our time is up. <laughs> long, long after it is obvious to everyone that we are goners, we continue to believe our duty is to hang on to the perks and privileges of our posts. In reality, we are just terrified of the come down. Yep. So for the sake of this great country, will the Prime Minister heed the advice of his former self, get over his terror and do the decent thing? Mr Speaker, I, no, I, with great respect, I, re, I, re, I refer the honourable lady to the answer I have just given. When, when things are tough, of course people uh, turn their fire on uh, the leader of the, the country, but uh, it is my job to get on and deliver. Effective governance inevitably requires loyalty and collective responsibility. Of course it does. And I'm instinctively a team player. And I have completely focused on governing effectively over the last year. But treading the tightrope between loyalty and integrity has become impossible in recent months. I wish my cabinet colleagues well, and I, I can see they have decided to remain in the cabinet. They will have their own reasons. But it is, it is a choice. I know just how difficult that choice is. But let's be clear. Not Doing something is an active decision. Can I say to the House, there will be no more personal statements today. Bye, Boris. Bye. Bye.